get things going here. A little bit of a technical difficulties. Let me make sure that uh, from a streaming standpoint, we are up and running and everything is good to go. Let's see, let's see here. Looking pretty good. I think we, I think we may be good to go. <laughs> well, good morning. It's 11.37 a.m., a little bit of a late start due to some technical difficulties. Needed to, you know, last minute update some drivers and do, uh, you know, some of that fun stuff that comes along with uh, technology. You know, it's kind of funny. The more technology we use, the more we need it, the more we rely on it. And sometimes the more complicated it gets. But we are we are streaming and operational. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. My name is Daniel. I am with Vantage Point AI, and we are going to spend time today digging into some high trending opportunities, some some stocks that I've been asked about uh, lately from from my my take from an option standpoint. We're just going to dig in and and talk about what's been going on from these trends. But before we do that, let me just make sure. I want to pull up the chat, the chat information here, and just make sure that we've got uh, everybody can see me okay, everybody can hear me okay, and everything is working as designed. If that's the case, do me a favor, work your way over to the chat really quickly, and uh, just just let me know something in the chat. Let me know if that's if that uh, is working for you, and I'll I'll uh, make sure we're good to go. Let's see here. Looking pretty good, I think. I think, I think, I think. All right, fine, fantastic. Hello. Yeah, I see the, the chat's coming in now. We lost the 50 DMA on the SPY. Need three days closing below for a new trend, says Earl. Well, possibly. We'll take a look. We got a, we got a, a new trend forecast quite some time ago in, in, in the indicators that I use. Hey, RJ, yep, a couple technical difficulties, but I think we got it all sorted out. Hello, hello. And yes, great. Good, Daniel. Good, good. All right. All right, let's get rolling then. Let's get rolling then. I'm just going to... Um, Pull up Vantage Point here, by the way, if you don't know, Vantage Point is the, the software that I use to, to do the analysis that I do on a daily basis. Whether we're talking about the underlying asset, whether we're talking about options trading, um, that is the technology that I like to depend on. So if, uh, uh, if you're looking at my screen wondering what that is, it is Vantage Point software. If you've got any questions about the software, you can always go to vantagepointforecasts.com. And we can we can dig into that. But what we're looking at right now on the spy, hey Barbara, what we're looking at on the spy right now is the fact that Vantage Point indicated a downtrend on four three. So this was the moment that, from a trading standpoint, um, you know I start to think more bearishly about price related to the spy. Um, you know this was four three. This was a couple of weeks ago now, thirteen days ago. You know beginning of the month. And the reason, the reason why uh, I look at the SPY when I see this happening is simply because this is a predicted moving average, this blue line. For anybody that's in this session that doesn't, uh, you know, understand what I mean by predicted moving average, just ask. I'm happy to tell you. But what I, what this tells me is that I've got a trend reversal forecasted on the horizon over the next couple of days. That was on four three. This is the the first moment that I could see that there was some weakness in the SPY and we were expecting a, a bit of a pullback. Whether it was an overall trend reversal or a pullback, um, I use uh, some, some confirming indicators to determine that. This was red, this was a predicted neural index. These lines were pointed down. These are momentum indicators that predict momentum over the next couple days. And what I'm looking at here is seeing that very clearly we got bearishness in the SPY, downloaded the data that night, by the way, I uh, do all of my data downloads in Vantage Point after 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. And the reason I do that is because that's when the AI updates its forecast. This is, by the way, an artificial intelligence trading program uh, that forecasts trends in advance with accuracy up to 87.4%. Um, so when I see something like that, where I get all these, these, these first four points of confirmation lined up on 4.3, I'm confident in the fact that there is some bearishness expected on the horizon. So from that standpoint, if I'm getting overall bearishness expected on the horizon at the beginning of April, 
I start to think bearishly about stocks and, and other markets out there. Not that I'm changing my overall tune to the markets to be a complete bear, just that there's bearishness working its way into this long bullish trend. And this is a long bullish trend that's been going for quite some time. So when we break it down and we look at the SPY, we can see that there's certainly some bearishness there. And we've got to start thinking about either, either, you know, selling some calls or buying some puts once the market opens the next day. Now, that decision comes down to the trading plan with the market conditions. Is the volatility higher than normal? Is the volatility normal, uh, lower than normal? Implied volatility is a tool that is an options trader that you know is, is something that can help you understand overall directional movements, but as well as whether or not you know, there's a, there's a uh, you know, uh, an option buying market or an option selling market. From an options trading standpoint, you can be a buyer, you can be a seller, but at the end of the day, depending on what the volatility is, we'll, we'll kind of lean you one way or the other as far as an advantage goes. And just a reminder that I'm, I'm not providing any trading advice here. This is all from an educational standpoint. Uh, the analysis that I do uh, it, you know, comes from my experience. I've got over 25 years experience in the markets, over a decade in using this artificial intelligence to make my, my trade decisions. So I'd like to share some of that with you. And, and when I'm seeing this scenario line up, that's telling me that there is some ultimately some bearishness working its way into the market. Yes, and for those Vantage Point users, Vantage Point also does update a second time after 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. And that's just to make sure that, you know, the, the, the Forex market and the crypto markets and things like that, you know, any, any late closing markets or any markets that data might be a little bit later gets updated and refreshed. So good question. All right, so what we see is that we see some bearishness overall happening. What I'm looking for and what I'm interested in is uh, what happens at the open? So we got a big gap up at the open the next day. Um, already we're thinking bearishness. So let's back up a step. If we're thinking about in this market scenario where there was not a whole lot of volatility going on into that cross of the downside, I'd be thinking about put buying in this scenario, right? You can use uh, your tools to find uh, implied volatilities. I use implied volatility percentile, implied volatility rank. Those are all... Uh, available in your platforms and in Vantage Point software as an add-on. But before I do any of that, I always like to go to support and resistance. So let me just uh, let me just add my support and resistance indicators on here so I can see if I'm looking at uh, whether or not I'm expecting some bearishness happening, where that bearishness could really play out. And what, what this tells me is that on this day that I got this crossover, I had two resistance points set at 52 week highs right here, really close to each other, right? I can see that. I also had a support point that was set here but was broken the day before. So I my next support point comes down to here, which means I've got a whole lot more room from that close to that support point for price to drop. Well, when I see that, then I think, yeah, there, there could be a great acceleration to the downside that I could pick up some, some fast gains from, from buying some puts, just a simple vertical, just buying some puts to the downside on the SPY. Uh, you know, from a SPY standpoint, you have a lot of expiration opportunities. I'm always thinking about 30 days. I'm not expecting to hold it 30 days, but expecting to set my expiration out 30 days. In some cases with a SPY, for instance, you could set it out 14 days um, and expect to hold it for a few days. You know, that's what it really comes down to is the expected hold for a swing trade, in my opinion, is anything from, you know, a couple of days to maybe a couple of weeks. Well, due to theta, due to time decay, I don't want to set my expiration personally too close to my expected hold period, if you will. So if I'm expecting to hold potentially for a, uh, a couple of weeks max, well, then I want to set my expiration out a couple of weeks past that. So I'm always doing 30 to 60 days. I'm not expecting to hold to the 60 day mark, just holding 30 to 60 days because I can always close that position early and reduce time decay. The closer you get to expiration, the more theta accelerates, the faster your option loses value due to time decay. So when you think about that, if I set my expiration out further than I'm expecting to hold it, I can have somewhat of a neutralizing effect on theta. It's Look, it's not a perfect science. This is about getting an advantage. That's how I like to uh, buy options and how to play that advantage in my favor. Now, if you set it too far out, 
that the, the value of that option will not accelerate at the pace that personally I like it to, right? You can always set it out a couple of months, but it, it, it moves very slowly in that case, right? So I, when I look at this, when I stop and I look at this chart, I see that I've got a lot of room to support down here. I got, a, I got, you know, we broke support the day before, so I can see that's already been broken. I got a lot of resistance up here. I got my four points of confirmation saying bearishness back here. Then at that point, I'm looking for the market open. When I see the market open up here, all I needed to do is start turning down to say, okay, now it's time to enter that position. You can watch it and wait for that move, or you can set your limit order that night. You can set your order and look for your fill the next day. And if you get an open above that midpoint of that predicted candle, then you know you've got maximum opportunity to the downside. This is about having trust and faith in your analysis. This is about using indicators and information that can give you a strategy like that. Are you, is it gonna be perfect every single time? No. Is it gonna win every single time? No, but if you can stack the odds in your favor, and in this case, I'm using artificial intelligence to stack the odds, I don't have to be too worried about it opening up here so high and it accelerating because the artificial intelligence was telling me bearishness, bearishness, bearishness across the board. RJ, let me see, I got a question here from RJ. I might add for the more skilled options traders, you can choose a credit spread option. Absolutely. It all comes down, RJ, to volatility. Volatility, if you got a higher implied volatility or a higher implied volatility percentile, then yes, 100% credit spreads would work because you'd wanna make some money on selling that premium. And you can reduce and define your risk that way, 100%. But what I said was, with volatility low, buying a put matches the trade plan that I have in this scenario, right? If volatility is high, then yes. And the, it, heck, if, if volatility is extremely high, well, then I don't even need to do a spread, right? I can just simply sell some calls in that scenario if volatility is that high, <laughs> right? Why not maximize my opportunity? So it's gonna come down to that volatility as we were talking earlier. And in this case, we had lower volatility going into that trend. And we could, if I was simply buying five puts with an expiration date at this point, uh, the beginning of May, then that would be a, a simple vertical, simple way to trade the SPY using this information. And we can see, RJ, and for anybody else, whether you're a beginner or more experienced options trader, you can see that that, regardless of how you played that, there was some really great gains to be had after that bearishness to the downside. You, you, are, you are dead on, RJ. We're, on, we're speaking the same language. We're speaking the same language, my friend. So we, we, get, we get that entry to the downside. And a lot of the questions that I get from people is, you know, is, is you know, where, what's my target? Where do I get out? How do I exit that position? No, not selling naked. I wasn't talking about selling naked. I'm talking about covered calls, my friend. I don't sell anything naked. Um, so when we look at this, we can see that we had support down here, right? When I've got support down here, that is the first place I'm looking to say, you know what, if I can get, depending on my trade plan, but if I can get a move down to that support level, then great. That is good enough for me. The question a lot of people have is, well, you know, am I using stop losses? How am I managing that risk? Well, with options being, you know, a defined risk scenario, if I'm buying some puts, then I know my premium is 100% at risk in that situation. That premium investment shouldn't, you know, in my opinion, be more than a couple percentage points of your total account, right? Diversify, manage your money. You know, managing risk is important. Let me just say this. Managing risk is more important than looking to make money, right? looking to make money. And I say that because making money is an aspect in the markets that every trader is after. But if you don't manage risk, then you can't, in my opinion, have those consistent gains because your losers wipe out your winners. But that's just my take, right? So looking at this, when you look at this chart, you can see very clearly, very easily that there is a very, very Strong trend of the downside, and yesterday it had it hit that support point that was down here. This one was not there at the time. If you understand how support and resistance uh, appears on the chart, this support point, this green arrow, would not have appeared until the end of this day, because it takes two higher lows to the left and two higher lows to the right to set that support point. So. When I was looking at this for a short position, that green arrow was not there. Heck, none of this was there, as a matter of fact. 
I'd be setting a target off of this support point to say, you know what, if I can get a move down to that, good to go. You can see that happened exactly yesterday. The move went down there. That would be a, a target. Now, this move from a trend standpoint went for April 15th. That was yesterday. Remember, from an expiration standpoint, it said at the beginning of May. You know, so when you sit back and you look at this and say, look, from this this example here, this 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 gain just to that support point, right? Just to that support point. Five contracts, you know, can generate two, three thousand dollars in gains in just a couple of trading days, you know, after you take the premium off of that. Because the key here is is about consistent gains over time. Sure, we all like to hit home runs, but if that is my target, I can either set a stop loss once it gets past 508. And then if it comes back to mental stops, I can watch it, that's up to you. But I can look at that and say, you know what, 508 where my target was, I can take it out and say, all right, bank that one as a win, let me go find something else. Or I can say, that's my exit. If price dips below that and pulls back to 508, I'm gone. Or if price stalls. Just a quick question for everybody that's in here. Why if price stalls? Because I've, I've got a support point down here. Right, I've, this support point was set way back here in February. If price stalls at 504 and starts to slow down and move sideways, why would that be a catalyst for me exiting that position? You can guess if you want to. I'm just saying, go go over to the chat and let me know in the chat what it is that you uh, would. Why would price stalling around an old support point be a catalyst for me to closing uh, an options position? Just let me know in the chat. I'm gonna I'm gonna get some water really quickly so I can make sure that uh, uh, we're good to go for the rest of this session. So bear with me while I do that. That'll give you a second to think about it. And like I said, if you need to guess, guess. If you're if you if you know the answer, then pop the answer in there. Heck, if you look at your trade plan and you're like, all right, my trade plan says I do the same thing. Why? Tell me tell me in the chat. I'd love to I'd love to hear from you and and understand what it is that we can do or that you can do to maximize your opportunities. Yeah, RJ, you're right about part of that. It might consolidate before bouncing. That is part of the reason, but it's an options related reason. Anybody else wanna pop in their idea, indicate of consolidation? Yep, consolidation, potential breakout. From an options trading standpoint, from an options trading standpoint, what does consolidation do for the value of my option? There it is, Sean. Thank you. Appreciate that. Theta, time decay. If price gets down there like it did pretty quickly in the last couple of days, that produced some powerful gains. But then if it stalls there, those gains start to reduce because of that theta. So if I see consolidation coming, even if it doesn't come up to my old target of 508, if I see consolidation working itself in, then you don't have to think about it, right? Eliminate that time decay, in my opinion. Still a very, very profitable move. Uh, vantage point indicated we would see this, the SPY, right? I mean, that's a pretty big range on the day for the SPY. If we hit that midpoint on the day, we're at 505. So what vantage point was indicating today that you could see Prices vacillate around 505. That's the middle of that range. We can go check out the SPY right now and see that the SPY, let me pull it up here. I hurt my neck uh, last night, so I'm, I'm turning a little funky. If you, if you see that, that's, that's all that is, but let's see here. Uh, there we go. Not have my my platform open, so let me just pull that and see what I can. Five oh five. There you go. That's right where the spy is right now, and uh, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> R.J. That's a great one too. He says my puts explanation. A lot of people close their puts at those targets and support case, and it causes things to bounce. Yep, that is true. But what does that mean for the option? And that's what that was my question. But R.J., I like your thought process. You're using trader sentiment to protect your gains or minimize your losses. You know, not a, not a bad thing to do. I like to rely on the artificial intelligence and, and the reasons why old support points are valuable uh, are, are, are plentiful, but that's how I use them 
in my analysis. Let's talk NVIDIA now. From an NVIDIA standpoint, a lot of the questions that I've got around NVIDIA, and I'm gonna put on my support and resistance. And by the way, this is a subset of the indicators that I use on a daily basis. I'm not gonna go through all the indicators I use. I've got a lot of them at my disposal, all predicted with the artificial intelligence or put together with predictive indicators, one or the other. So this way I can draw some very clear conclusions around what's expected to happen. But the questions I get on NVIDIA, is NVIDIA expected to trend down? Is it going to ex expect it to keep falling? And it's very, very easy to see that we've got major consolidation going on in NVIDIA. As a matter of fact, support and resistance are highlighting some very strong channels. So if you're thinking about NVIDIA from an options trading standpoint, when you see these very strong channels flanked with support and resistance, you can see it's been here for weeks, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Today being thirteen days in this channel, that's that's basically three weeks, right? So the question that people have about Nvidia is: is it, is Nvidia expected to keep going, right? Is Nvidia expected to keep going up? Is Nvidia expected to reverse? Is it expected to go down? There's so many questions out there. If I layer through my predictive indicators right now with now that channel outlined, you'll see there's major consolidation. We got a bearish trend to the downside, and then we got a bullish cross up, and then a bearish one down. That immediately tells me there's major consolidation, although there's bearishness on the short-term crossover. That is the one-day prediction. The two-day prediction has some consolidation in it. You can see those lines on top of each other. And then the three-day predicted moving average from a trend standpoint is saying still some bearishness overall left in that trend. But remember, we're in this channel. I outlined the channel for you basically at nine, call it 9, 10, 9, 11 to 8, 30, right? You can see that channel there where prices fell into that channel. We've got a basis forming right now on NVIDIA. Overall, Vantage Point is indicating more bearishness than bullishness. As a matter of fact, from the, the time that this trend, trend changed from a momentum standpoint, if I just connect these momentum points, from the time that trend changed to where it is right now, you can see you've got bearish and consolidation overall. Not everything, the short-term momentum is saying a little bit, one day predicted momentum, saying there's a slight bit of bullishness in there, but more consolidation. So again, that takes me right to the middle of that candle on the predicted high and predicted low. When I've got a channel like this, bearishness overall from a strength standpoint and momentum tailing off, that tells me, again, consolidation and channeling expected. When I have uh, channeling and consolidation expected, you got a couple of things. With the channeling that's going on in NVIDIA, we know the strength that NVIDIA has overall. Delta neutral, right? I'm thinking delta neutral immediately. When I look at this, I see iron condor all day long because of the bullishness from trader sentiment related to NVIDIA because of the trend that NVIDIA's had. It came off of... 52 week high recently. So it it's pulled back, but it wants to go bullishly. So I've got a great opportunity to go sell some, some you know, if, if I look at this, I got sell some calls outside of the 52 week high, 973 roughly, right? I can go sell some puts outside of the support below 770, right? I've got, I've got the ability here where uh, there is an option uh, income opportunity in NVIDIA, and it's been there for a few days now, actually when it entered into this channel and started bouncing around between these support and resistance levels. A lot of options uh, opportunity for you. A lot of options opportunity for you. When you when you look at that and you say, you wanna create some income, right? Iron Condor is selling, because at this point with NVIDIA, I think implied volatility has been on the increase from what I saw last. And I can see that there's very clearly some ranges that I can go in and set some some really good opportunities. Maybe you want to do some credit spreads with that. Regardless, Nvidia is forecasted to be in this range. It's got some bearishness with momentum peeling off from a bullish standpoint, but it's expected to be in this range. I'm going to go put up volume real quick. Just take a look uh, what the volume changes have been. There you go. Volume pretty much the same, but it's turned from more bullish to bearish. So. Uh, again, this channel is expected to be respected, if you will, from NVIDIA, and I see that as consolidation. We can do the same kind of analysis on Boeing. You know, I, I walk through the predictive indicators uh, one by one. By the way, if you don't have these predictive indicators, 
You can add them, you can get them. Just go to vantagepointforecast.com. Happy to help you get that. But right now, from a short-term prediction standpoint on Boeing, what the artificial intelligence is saying is, yeah, you can expect some, some overall, some more bearishness in this trend. Really great bearish trend, by the way, that was forecasted in Vantage Point back at the beginning of the month. This is a strong bearish trend with a crossover to the downside and the predictive differences rolling over. This is the one day forecast. So when we look at the default forecast, I saw this real bullishness work itself in on 4.3. Interesting enough, what day did we talk about the SPY forecasted down 4.3? This makes a, a really great opportunity for me to do a commercial around what I call the market overview. Why, why is it important to know the overall market perspective or forecast before we're looking at individual assets. It's something we treat, we, we teach at Vantage Point in the Vantage Point University, which is the market overview can give you a sense of the direction that's expected to the, the Dow, the NASDAQ, the S&P and the Russell are expected to go to help you understand the flow of the stream, if you will. If things are reversing, and you're getting that reversal or that bearishness across a lot of those indices, three out of the four at least. Sometimes a Russell can be a little, a little randy, if you will. But if you're getting, if you're getting uh, bearishness from a lot of those indices, well, then you've got to be thinking more bearishly around the individual assets. That played itself out exactly right here on Boeing. You see four three the same day. Uh, you know there was some short term news about the CEO on Boeing. Boeing that caused about a seventy two hour jump in price, and then the intermarkets took right back over again. Uh, and any time there's a fundamental event like that, like earnings or, you know, CEO stepping down or whatever the case is, you could get a little 72 hour pop. And then what happens is the inner markets that we talk about, uh, the global influencing factors that can move price around, take back over and 4.3 vantage point said, yeah, for sure bearishness on the horizon. We got it. By the way, this was a great opportunity setting, uh, uh, setting an option, you know, just buying a bearish uh, you could buy a put in this situation, buy a couple of puts on this, set your expiration out. Uh, March, what, March 15th? No, excuse me, not March 15th, May, let me check the date. 17th, that's what it was, May 17th. Man, my neck's getting stiffer and stiffer as the day goes on. Um, May 17th expiration, and you can see that's produced very, very, very well. If we go and we set our support and resistance out here, um, you know, we can see that at that point, it had already broken that resistance, that support point that was here, was set back here on 326. We get our two candle closes after that, then we know at a minimum on four or five, it has cleared that support and has, has an opportunity to move down to the next support level. If I put on my long-term crossover, you can see my long-term crossover got the same indication on four or four cross to the downside. So at at the earliest, 4.1, at the latest, 4.4, vantage point saying, okay, if you're not convinced, you should be convinced now that this trend is expected to push lower. See, that's the benefit in ha of having a one, two, and three day forecast is I can verify them all against each other. I also have the ability to see when prices drop below that T cross long. In vantage point for you users, this is a triple cross, right? You guys know this, this has three predicted moving averages in it. And you can see it crossed back below that T cross long, same thing for one. So there was bearishness across the board, uh, no doubt from a Boeing standpoint. All the way into this point, right where we're at right now. Uh, there's a support point that dates way back to 168.34. Uh, there's a support point here. So from a target standpoint with a May expiration, that 168 number is a great number. That got tagged yesterday from a target standpoint. Again, when, you, when you're thinking about options, before you ever execute anything, one of the things that I like to do, some of the things that I like to do is A, right, make sure that my artificial intelligence is, is forecasted the right direction according to my market overview. The other thing I like to do is manage my risk. Know how much my premium could be in buying that before I ever enter the position and make sure it matches my trade plan and it's not overextending me more than 2%. Some of the other things that I like to do is I like to set a target, right? I like to set a target. Whether it's a percentage target gain for you, whether it's a support or resistance target gain for me, just make sure that you know the expectation of this. 
and then apply that to your trade plan and say, you know what, if I'm expecting to make that and I have a, a, a three to one reward to risk ratio, then I've got to understand if that's my target, where is my stop loss or my exit if things go against me, right? Because I don't have to give up all of my premium, right? I don't have to give back all of the premium. If things go against me and I have a, a three to one reward to risk ratio, and I'm really willing to risk one to make three, or maybe you got to uh, you flip it, a one to three, and you're willing to risk three to make one, well, then use your target and your stop losses. And you don't have to put them in your platform if you don't want to. A lot of people say, well, my options platform won't let me to use use stop, you know, stop loss. Okay, that's fine. You still can identify exit points and log them so that you know if prices get there, you can exit that, right? So when we look at this, we can see that a good target of 168 and change, call it 169, you know, the idea here is that you know when prices get down there that you've hit your target, and that was yesterday, 415, with an expiration of 517, you know, a 30 day out expiration. Again, a very, very profitable move to the downside, even if you waited to get that confirmation of that, that uh, predicted uh, moving average, a long term predicted moving average. Again, I like to use uh, five contracts, 500 shares, a very, very profitable move. You can see the hypothetical gains here is $7,440, right? I'm not saying that everybody that traded this made that. I'm not saying that that's the gains that everybody makes every single time. I'm just saying in this example, that's what uh, we were able to, to see uh, from a, a change in price standpoint. Where's it going now? Well, we've broken, we've hit that target, we've hit that support point, then stalled. Take a look at momentum, folks. What's going on with momentum? What do you see with Boeing's momentum? Two of the predicted momentum indicators have rounded out the bottom. Does that mean that prices are expected to accelerate bearishly, stall, or reverse and bounce? Well, here's what I can tell you. You're at a support point. We are at a support point and prices are starting to round, which means I am going expecting a stall right in that, I would say the upper part of that predicted range. So that means I could expect Boeing today predicted a high of 169.74. That means I could expect Boeing to be between the midpoint of 167.47 and the predicted high of 169.74 today. I colored it in in case anybody isn't using vantage point, doesn't understand what I mean. Look on the right hand side, here is the predicted bar I use. Here is the upper portion of it. I would expect Boeing to be in that range today simply because momentum is predicted and rounding out and it's at a support point that I broke yesterday. The support point is gonna to try to keep prices right there. So I know exactly what I need to do from a, a trade standpoint. If this target wasn't enough to convince me, then the consolidation and the risk of uh, theta stealing my value is enough to say, all right, Time to, time to move on for things, right? Does it mean that I'm done trading Boeing? No, I can always do an analysis at 6.30 tonight. One of my data updates, I can wait to get my two confirming closes below that support point to say that there's another bearish opportunity. Or if this is something that I just, I have on my watch list constantly, then I could also be looking for a bounce to buy some calls or do some spreads. Uh, Crystal is asking, did Vantage Point see the market dropping last Friday? Oh, Crystal, you must have missed the beginning. Uh, for anybody that might have missed it, we, we talked about the SPY Vantage Point forecast of the market dropping 4.3. And uh, that 4.3, that drop was, uh, yeah, since, since then till now, there hasn't been a change in Vantage Point's forecast indicating bearishness. So anybody that might have missed that, you could always go back to the beginning of this video. It'll be in our... Uh, if you're on YouTube, it'll be in our videos. If you're on Facebook, make sure you watch that video from the beginning and you can see the assessment of the SPY and the overall market, okay? Good, 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 good. All right, uh, McDonald's. Now, this is a great example. I, I wanted to talk about McDonald's here because this is a great example of a bearish trend to the downside and consolidation that worked itself in. We got a couple of points where consolidation worked itself in here, here, and here. Well, when you're seeing consolidation work itself in, you can see what happens to price. Even though it accelerates back down to that point, you've got two weeks of price either consolidating and staying above that point in this overall downtrend. 
That is value stealing consolidation. That is time decay at its finest. You are not gaining value. Your option is losing value in that time period. Well, take a look what's going on right now. Same thing. If you're bearish this and you've got you've got puts to the downside on this, right? If you're long puts and you see this consolidation happen right here, especially when that consolidation, look, let's put on our verified support and resistance. Especially when that consolidation, you can see, is at these support points. You get a support point set and it comes back down to it and bounces again. All right? You can see all of that happening on the screen. Soon as you see that consolidation happen, you've got to be concerned, in my opinion, with theta, with time decay hurting you. So what do we say about McDonald's right now? Well, Advantage Point is saying about McDonald's right now, if I scroll through my predictions, I can say my short-term predicted moving average is indicating bearishness, my medium-term is indicating bearishness, and my long-term is indicating bearishness. So I've got bearishness across my trend indicators. I have a support point down here that has been tested and failed yesterday. Excuse me. So what, what Vantage Point is saying is that the overall trend is still expected to be lower, but it's got to clear the support point to get a whole lot lower faster. We're currently in a channel on McDonald's. There's consolidation happening. There's a support point down here. And when we look at our momentum at the bottom, what do we see? What do we see happening with momentum? Go to the chat box really quickly. Get involved in this conversation. After all, this is educational. You know, in my opinion, the more involved you can get, the more you learn. So if you know when you see that consolidation happen, if, if, if you're looking at that and saying, hey, uh, clearly, clearly there's uh, support down here and momentum shifting bullishly, we can express, expect prices with McDonald's to do something. That something, in my opinion, is consolidate. Consolidate, right? So you've got a lot of, of, of decisions to be made here, right? You've got, you've got some decisions to be made where when you look at this, you can say, hey, you know what? If I'm short this opportunity and I haven't already hit my target or exited this position, I've got more consolidation working itself in. If you're looking at this and saying, you know what? I'm not in this opportunity and, and there might be something here that I want to do depending on volatility, right? You could be, uh, in this case, going out and selling some calls. Momentum has shifted a little bit, so a little bit risky scenario. You could do some credit spreads. You know, uh, that's a that's a really good option for this scenario, depending on volatility. But McDonald's is expecting to channel. The overall trend is still expected to be bearish, but over the next day or two, we can expect some channeling because of what's happening from a predicted mo momentum standpoint. If it breaks this support point, if it breaks the support point, then that's something that you've got to keep in mind. Because if it breaks that support point with the forecasted trend to say saying down, if momentum rolls over, like you can see the short-term momentum rolled over, if you start to see this happen with these predicted momentum indicators at the same time as breaking that support point, yes, you could see acceleration of the downside very fast, which is why I said selling some calls in that scenario is one of those situations that plays very well or you know limited risk options trading. But consolidated in the short term, overall bearishness in the trend expected based on the vantage point indicators. Now here's one that we've got to be cautious of. It's Tesla. Why do we have to be cautious of Tesla? Well, we saw we got some really good bearishness in Tesla. Um, you know, for we when we scroll through all of our indicators, you can see the short term crossover said on Friday last week, Tesla was expected to be bearish on Monday, right? Momentum going into that day on the one day momentum indicator was expected to be bearish on Monday. That's very clear. We're expecting the bearishness that we got yesterday on Tesla, right? When we go into the two day forecast that we, we, we were looking at last night, we can see that we had bearishness expected today on Tesla. Price is expected to be overall lower. Long term crossover bearishness has been on Tesla since 4.3. There was some consolidation in it, but all vantage point predictive indicators we're indicating bearishness on Tesla. And then the final check is the triple cross long, this fat line. When prices are below that fat line and can't get above it for more than two days in a row, then we know we're overall bearishness on Tesla. So when we look at Tesla, we can see that there's a great opportunity to the downside. And that opportunity presented itself very clearly for a short-term put buying scenario 
in this case, right there on 412. That opportunity was there and it would have hit its target very, very quickly. I'm gonna put the support and resistance on and you can see there was a target right there. That means yesterday or today that target is hit and you're out before earnings. Because earnings is coming up April 23rd. So now the question comes into play is how do I play this going into earnings? We've got seven days until earnings, right? Vantage points forecast around tests around earnings can be very, very accurate, but that's gonna come in a couple of days before earnings. We still have seven days out. Has anybody here t heard of you know uh, the earnings rush from a volatility standpoint? The earnings rush from a volatility standpoint tells you that volatility increases the closer you get to earnings. And then as soon as earnings are announced, volatility evaporates, and that is the earnings crush, the volatility crush. When you think about that volatility rush going into earnings, there's a lot of options selling opportunities related to Tesla coming into this play, right? And when you look at that, you know, if, if there's a lot of Tesla holders out there covered calls all day long leading into that, that earnings announcement, right? As long as from an earnings standpoint, you're out before. <laughs> Definitely don't want to be into that announcement. And, and what I've got right now is that it's going to be after the market close on April 23rd with the estimate of 36 cents. Okay, so this is a great opportunity to play the IV rush leading into earnings and then exit before the crush, right? Vantage point overall trend forecast on Tesla is bearish bearish so you've got to try that apply that to your trade plan we got momentum peeling off we've got enough things here saying that overall from a a trend trading standpoint or a iv standpoint that it's to the bearish side from a forecast standpoint so all you tesla holders out there if you haven't already at this point i mean vantage point goes back pretty far on this bearishness to january the whole entire year bearish with a little blip right here, which is perfectly okay. Profit taking on that bearish opportunity, but still covered calls from January 1st to now have been very, very valuable. And that doesn't change right now going into earnings right up until April 23rd, all right? CRM, salesforce.com, you can see that. I see that uh, Crystal asked to look at HL. Um, if there's a certain stock you wanna take a look at, go ahead and pop it in the chat. I've got a few minutes, I got 11 minutes left before uh, a hard stop that I have. So if I can pop in some of these, I will certainly do that. You just gotta go to the chat and let me know what you wanna take a look at now as I'm going through Salesforce. So in CRM and Salesforce, we can see we got a cross to the downside on the medium term crossover back here on 328. If I go to my short term crossover, we can see the 328, we had bearishness there as well. And the long term crossover on 328 at bearishness there as well. So. We were bearish across the board on uh, salesforce.com, CRM on 328. Now, you can see that the first couple of days from that bearishness, from that expected bearishness, prices went up and then fell off a cliff, right? This is why, this is exactly why you've gotta, get, you've gotta use your support and resistance levels or your risk tolerance levels to understand where to set some of the things that you're seeing from a support and resistance standpoint. This is the day, 328. This, these, these, these arrows did not exist on 328, okay? We have the benefit of them now, but we didn't have the benefit of them then. So we had this arrow right here, and we had this arrow right here, right? These were the arrows that we had on that day. So from a target standpoint, I'll show you the targets. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just drop a line on these so everybody can see those. Uh, this arrow up here, 311.78, call it 312. And this one down here was there on 328. It was already active and it's 293.66. So what we'd be saying here on 328 is that we've got some bearishness expected. And I keep saying that day because that's the day that we had all the crossovers in agreement right here. This would have come out of IntelliScan for you Vantage Point users, you know, in telescan and how valuable it is, but that would have presented itself right there saying, I've basically got a one-to-one -one ratio. I can risk one to make one using that information. Well, if I'm willing to risk one to make three, well, then I can use this other support point down here, right? It really depends on what your trade or your risk tolerances say. You may say, I only want, I'm only willing to risk three to make one, right? And that new support point appears 
a couple of days in and then you've got your, your spot. Just understand what your risk tolerance is. If it's a risk one to make one, if it's a risk one to make two, if it's a risk one to make three, then understand that from a risk tolerance standpoint. I use those support points, so target of 293 with an exit of 311 on a stop would have been the, 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 the brackets that I put on that, that would have met the trade plan and everything, and you could have seen this came really close, probably scared a lot of people, but did not hit that, that support point. You can see it, it's a new arrow, so it's a lower support point. Would have been scary as an exit, but guess what? That's defined risk trading. Instead, that day, it hurt, hit the bullseye from a target standpoint. So as long as there's an opportunity there from a gains, you can see where that could have been an exit, if not certainly yesterday after that move in CRM. But you can see now how using support and resistance with the predictive indicators helps you set up your option before you ever enter that position. And then once you enter that position, because you're using artificial intelligence, well, I am, you may not be, you can have ultimate confidence in those levels with that support and resistance layered on top of it, right? All right, let's see. I've got Hecla Mining, HL Crystal. So with Hecla Mining, you can see what we've got is a pretty strong bullish trend. If I walk through my crossovers, I got short-term bearish on Friday. Uh, I got my medium term on Hecla crossing over yesterday. Uh, and then I got my long term saying consolidation, not a cross yet. So my predicted trend indicators, two are bearish, one is consolidated. And why it's consolidated is because the shaded area is green, but the blue line, the predicted moving average, this is a, a patented protected indicator, are, is saying uh, it's rolling over. So that tells me consolidation. I immediately start thinking about the middle to the bottom side of that candle, right? The middle to the bottom side of that candle simply because my medium term and my short term are both bearish and uh, my long term is consolidated. So the best I would see is 537 at 630 p.m. Eastern time last night. I wouldn't see anything better than that, especially because my neural index is bearish crystal and my predictive differences, which are the momentum indicators, are all bearish. So uh, we'd be expecting things on the bottom side of that predicted candle for Hecla Mining today. I'm curious, Crystal, are you a Vantage Point user? Um, I'm trying to remember from a, from a name standpoint, but uh, we have over 40,000 users, so unfortunately I can't remember them all. Just let me know in the, in the chat box, uh, in the questions box, you know, if you are. Because if you're not, my question to you is, Using these predictive indicators like this is is that something that you can see is, is valuable even if if you are I guess uh, You have the indicators, so I have to assume they are valuable There's that support point. Uh, there's another thing. Look at that that support point and vantage points proprietary predicted low are all in agreement When you get multiple indicators that are calculated independently of one another and they are in agreement that that brings confluence that brings confidence uh, that number is at 522, so what this is saying is that we would be vacillating and floating right around that 522, excuse me, 525, 530 area um, on Hecla, on Hecla Mining, all right? Let me look at the chat real quick and see if Crystal has responded. I don't see it. Hey, Melissa, good, good. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Love it. I just saw your name in there, and I, I got to meet Melissa in person this weekend. That was very, very nice. So TSCO for Chris, TSCO. There we go. Just a quick countdown, I got about five minutes. TSCO is bearish on vantage point from four two to now. Uh, even the momentum tried to try, try to stall things. What we're seeing on TSCO right now in vantage point is bearishness. Let's walk through our predicted moving averages. The short term bearishness, the medium term bearishness, the long term bearishness yep triple cross prices are below the triple cross bearish well chris so far we're seeing a lot of bearishness going on from this trend standpoint the predicted high says we could see prices go up to 245.36 today predicted low says potentially as low as 238 we can see that we've got oh let me pop in support here got some port of resistance <clears throat> All right, so we do have a support point that goes dates back to pre this big trend. This big trend was bearish from uh, four one. This support point is saying, "Hey, you got support at at uh, two forty six 
214. That's where that, that the support point is at 246.14. If anybody is, is curious as how support can impact price, just take a look at this support point. This was pre the trend as well. This support point was at 253.03. Prices came down and closed below it. What happened immediately after it closed below that support point? Even though there's bearishness, it opened above it. And then it pulled back below it again. And then look, a doji candle literally sitting almost at the same spot of support. So price stalled at support for three days. And then it tried to push lower, but couldn't stay lower. It came right back to support. Four days, five days, six days. That's the impact that support can have when momentum isn't pushing through that support level. Well, here is an old support level right here, right? Here's an old support level. Here's that one, two days. Looks very familiar, right? Got below it, got below it again. What would be expected for today is for price try to work back to that support level. That old support level and this bearish trend is, as I said a second ago, let me just remind everybody and myself, 246.14. I would have no, no qualms with price going all through this candle and being up at that 246.14. Why? Because that's how support acts. It, it, it pulls and holds on price if we don't have enough volume and momentum. I would need extreme bearish volume and extreme bearish momentum to push that. I'm getting decreasing bearish volume. And for anybody that knows volume studies and, and how volume can impact price, decreasing bearish volume, which means volume is decreasing on this. And even though there's more bearishness and bullishness or there's some down days, it's not enough to push past that. I can even, this is where my predicted momentum indicators really come in handy because I can start to layer in stochastics and MACD all from a predicted forecast standpoint. Predicted RSI, predicted percent R. I can layer these in and see if I'm getting extreme bearishness from my momentum indicators uh, to say whether or not things are expected to happen. Look, this momentum is overextended. It's the lowest momentum we've seen in three months. It wants to go back up. Same here, this is consolidated and overextended. All my momentum indicators are overextended, which means they are at lower or more bearish momentum than we've seen in the last three months. Don't turn that into a false positive. Don't think that that means things are expected to scream bearishly. Overextended momentum is like extending a rubber band to its point of where it wants to come back. Prices will stall around that support point, right? You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm glad that was helpful. Uh, let me see. <laughs> well, you're, you being here, Crystal Crystal says, yes, I am a Vantage Point user, but not great at reading it. You being here is, is showing that, you know, you are certainly interested in getting better and better at reading it. Let me go back up after TSCO. Uh, Chris, I did one for you already. Let me hop over to Burrow for Apple. AAPL, just trying to spread the love and get tickers for multiple people. So here's Apple. I'm going to put support and resistance on it right away, just simply because what I'm seeing from an Apple standpoint is a support point. Heck, I'm going to even check the 52-week low. I want to check that out. 52-week low is a 167.66. Apple's got major support at 168. Heck, it's got a basis at 168. So when we see prices bop off of Apple, here you go. Bounced off of Apple. Wednesday last week, Vantage Point said, bullish apple it bounced really hard went up to that resistance pulled back to this resistance this resistance point that's now acting like support so apple is trying to get bullish and stay bullish apple has bullish momentum happening right now the short-term momentum turned off oh boy so we've got a lot of volatility going on with apple just remember one thing there is a lot of support at 168 to 169 168 to 169 which means uh let's cycle through our short term medium term and long term because with that support oh boy that bullishness in apple just doesn't want to stay even vantage point predictions are saying yeah that short term bullishness that one day pop that vantage point predicted is is already being threatened by bearishness there's a lot of consolidation going on with apple heck even the predicted high and predicted lower saying you can see prices come right back to that support we have at 169 not good news for Apple and the bullishness, but the good news is, is that there is certainly support at 168 to 169 propping up Apple's price. So if we do see it fall, we'll probably see it fall and bounce there. 
And there is some overall bullish momentum in the trend uh, saying even if this bounce is, is short-lived right now, there still could be some bullishness on the horizon for Apple. We just have to cross-check our T-cross long and see if prices are above that T-cross long, which is a triple crossover long. Prices got above it. Two days have stayed above it. That T-cross long level from uh, 6.30 data download last night was 171.98. Look right up here at the top of the screen. 171.98. We need to see prices close about around, above that 171.98 to make sure that Apple's bullishness is expected to continue. Otherwise, this is more consolidation. For you options traders out there, take a look. You've got a very good level at 179 and you've got even this lower support at 164 for your iron condors, for your delta neutral strategy. This is a channel that Apple's been in for, oh geez, a month or two. So you wanna talk about creating some income with options, 179 and one, uh, 163 are some really great levels for selling those positions. I went over on time, I was trying to keep it at 12.30, I'm already late for my next appointment, but it's time well spent, you know? And that's the one thing about this is I really enjoy uh, imparting any, any interpretation and vantage point or any education in, in the markets that I've been able to acquire by working with some of the best in the world. Um, uh, Lou Mendelson, you know, Larry Williams, uh, some, some really, really powerful users of technical indicators. And of course, I've got the advantage, advantage point and the predictive indicators with artificial intelligence. So... Again, if you're looking at this and you're liking the analysis and, and you don't have this or you've got questions and you want to dig into more details, just go to vantagepointforecast.com. Happy to answer your questions. Sorry I didn't get to all the, the tickers. Yes, Mike, we do have cryptos as we chatted. Uh, really, really great stuff. Um, some opportunities out there that uh, Vantage Point has been picking out, you know, week over week, year over year. Heck, it's been available since 1991 with this kind of accuracy, and I'm glad that I can share it with everybody. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for being here. And as I like to say, thank you for letting me give you the view from my vantage point. Have a great day.